Chapter 39. Listening to Laura. Tobias's story had impressed me deeply. Because it was based on the new principles of fraternal union, his home made me reflect on my own condition. After all, I too still considered myself to be the head of a terrestrial household, and I could imagine how difficult it would be for me in a similar situation. Would I have the courage to follow Tobias's example? I admitted that I wouldn't. In my view, I wasn't capable of displeasing my dear Zelia so much, and I would never accept such an imposition on her part. The explanations at Tobias's home tortured my mind. I found no right answers that could satisfy me. I was so preoccupied about it that on the following day, I decided to pay Lysias a visit in my spare time. I was eager to hear what Laura had to say on the matter because I trusted her like a mother. I received a joyful welcome and then waited for the proper moment in which I could calmly and unhurriedly listen to Lysias's mother. After the youngsters took their leave to pursue their usual diversions, I somewhat bashfully explained to my kind friend what was troubling me. She tapped into her full life experience and began, You did the right thing in bringing me this question for our mutual consideration. Every soul-torturing problem requires the help of a friend to find a solution. After a brief pause, she proceeded, Tobias's case is only one of the many we know about here and in other spirit colonies that are characterized by elevated thought. But it is shocking to our senses, isn't it? I remarked earnestly. If we think from the human point of view, such a thing would even be scandalous. However, my friend, now we must bear in mind all the principles of our spiritual nature. This means that we must understand the spirit of continuity that governs the evolutionary phases of life. Since we had to endure a long period of animal-like existence, we cannot expect to get rid of traces of it overnight. It took us many centuries to emerge from the lower geological layers. Sex is part of the heritage of our divine faculties that have taken us a long time to understand. It won't be easy for you right now to grasp the higher meaning of the domestic organization you visited yesterday. However, the happiness there is great because of the atmosphere of understanding that has been created amongst the performers of the drama that began on earth. Not everyone succeeds in substituting bonds of light for chains of darkness in such a short time. But is their case the general rule? Do all men and women who have married more than once reorganize their home here in the company of all the loved ones they have ever known? With great patience, Laura explained, Don't be so radical. One has to proceed slowly. Many people may feel affection for one another, but they don't really understand one another. Don't forget that our vibratory affinities are far more important than those on earth. Tobias's case is an example of the victory of true fraternity on the part of three souls interested in arriving at a right understanding. Those who don't conform to the law of fraternity and understanding obviously won't cross such boundaries. The dark regions of the umbral are crowded with spirits that failed in similar trials. As long as they hate, they are like magnetic needles under the most antagonistic influences. As long as they don't grasp the truth, they will suffer the empire of falsity, and consequently, they will be unable to enter the regions of higher activity. There are countless individuals who suffer for years without any spiritual relief simply because they have neglected true fraternity. What happens then? I asked, availing myself of a brief pause. If they aren't admitted to spirit centers of worthwhile learning, where do those poor souls live while enduring such trials? After they have experienced truly infernal suffering caused by the inferior creations they have invented for themselves, they will try to use a new physical experience to achieve what they failed to achieve in the environment apart from their earth body. 
Divine goodness grants their minds the forgetfulness of the past, and through blood ties they are reunited with those whom they deliberately shunned out of hate or misunderstanding. Thus, we can fully understand the meaning of Jesus' message when he advises us to immediately reconcile with our adversaries. His warning is really apropos, and we must heed it for our own good. Upon finishing an earthly experience, souls can use their time wisely in the spirit world to accomplish spiritual deeds, which in turn help them return to denser matter, if necessary, with fewer concerns. There are many spirits who spend centuries trying to undo animosities and antipathies during their earthly experiences, but then revert to them again after disincarnating. For Jesus, my dear Andre, the issue of forgiving is paramount. Simply talking about forgiveness is meaningless. Forgiving is more than a matter of mere words. One who truly forgives must move and remove the inner heavy burdens of the past. At this point, Laura fell silent as she needed to reflect on the importance of the concepts she had just explained. Then I added, The marriage experience is very sacred to me. She wasn't surprised by my remark. Our conversation would be of little interest to spirits still undergoing simple animal-like experiences. But we who understand the need for illumination with Christ realize that it is crucial to bear in mind not only the marriage experience, but also the entire sexual experience, for it profoundly affects the life of the soul. Listening to her words, I couldn't help blushing. Remembering my past as an ordinary man, my wife had been a sacred object whom I placed above all other affections. However, on hearing Laura's explanations, those familiar words from the Old Testament came to mind. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, or his wife, or his manservant, or his maidservant, or his ass, or his ox, or anything that is thy neighbor's. Perplexed at Tobias's case, I, all of a sudden, felt unable to discuss the matter any further. Even so, my friend noticed my inner confusion and continued, Since the effort of righting wrongs is everyone's task, there has to be room for a lot of mutual understanding and a respect for divine mercy, which offers us so many ways to correct our wrongdoings. Every sexual experience of the individual who has already received some spiritual light is an enormously important event, which is why fraternal understanding must precede any truly redemptive work. Just a short time ago, I heard a great instructor in the Ministry of Elevation affirm that if he could, he would materialize himself on the physical plane so that he could inform religious people in general that in order to be divine, all charity must be based on fraternity. At this point, Laura invited me to visit Eliosa, who was still confined to her room. It was a strong hint that she didn't want to go into any more detail on the subject. After noticing the increasing improvement of the young new arrival from the planet, I returned to the chambers of rectification while immersed in deep thought. Now, I was no longer preoccupied with Tobias's situation or Hilda's or Luciana's attitudes. What impressed me most was the remarkable power of human fraternity.